when people tell you to pray for a widow, you know, especially when or widower when they are going through um, their initial grief process and initial grief shock, mm -hmm. that strength comes to help them financially because it's hard, but finance, your finances, your money, your bills, whatever, they don't stop. Yeah. This is Lissandra. Welcome to Grace and Grief. Today we're having a special edition of Grace. We're doing an interview with my sis here. She's going to introduce herself and we're going to just talk a little bit about what to do with your finances after losing a spouse. Um, this is kind of an issue that a lot of people I think don't talk about often, but it's a big deal, especially when either the, your spouse was the person that was handling the money um, and so taking over the finances is new for you or even if they weren't even if you were doing it together or if you were the person the primary person that was handling the finances it's still emotional it's emotional to rise up and take that responsibility or to even know what to do um, without them there without their income perhaps or without their input so Tam, you want to introduce yourself? Well, I want to say thank you for having me today. Absolutely. So my name is Tamara Durvin. I am a certified financial educator, but I think the thing that most qualifies me for this discussion today on top of being um, a financial educator is that I too am a widow. I became a widow in December of 2016. So I believe my story is what qualifies me for this discussion today. And um, I do have a passion for financial literacy and educating people about their finances and their resources. Mm -hmm. So I'm excited yeah. to be here with you today Thank to talk you. about this subject and to help anyone who's going through um, this situation where whether it's new for you, whether you just, just became a widow, or if you've been a widow for a little while now yeah. and you're just trying to still navigate these financial waters. Yeah, that's awesome. Um, can you tell us a little bit about your husband and just what happened with him when you became a widow? Um, you know, just, just what happened and what was your initial um, emotion or thoughts even when it came to handling the finances? So my husband, um, he actually had lymphoma, so he passed okay. away from a cancer. Okay. So on top of the grief of just losing him from a financial perspective, that year before wasn't the best year okay. from a financial perspective because we were dealing with medical bills wow. and things like that. Okay. So um, it was, I wanna say it was a little bit complicated. Wow. But I will say that for me, God really did provide. And I think he, him being the foundation of my story is what really helped me through on top of just having a specific financial discipline that really helped me through mm -hmm. i will say because as you see that you know i'm a financial educator and this is my area yeah i did manage the finances of our household so that piece wasn't brand new for me mm -hmm. um but i've worked with people that that was brand new for them like looking at you know their their finances for the first time mm -hmm. um, that part was a blessing to me but the the impact of grief mm -hmm. was severe like okay. that was because I was truly I would say I was probably really more hurt by God I'm like Lord yeah me? like you would do this to me yeah. so I wasn't people say you know did you have anger I think my initial emotion was disappointment and hurt yeah that right. this would be a part of Your my story, story. Yeah. That's another video, ain't it? That's another, that's another video. <laughs> that's a real video. I felt the um, same way. I um it's, it's 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 I feel like this point where you're saying, you know, it's emotional. It's not just that, okay, let me be responsible for my money. It's the fact that you're dealing with a lot of complicated emotions and a lot of disappointment. I think even for me and a lot of people too, 
sometimes you're dealing with those different levels of depression. Mm -hmm. So it's like, okay, look at the budget. Do I even want to be on earth? <laughs> yeah. You know what I'm saying? So you're dealing with, you have to recognize, and I say this, you know, to people um, that I've worked with is you do, you do have, you have to basically deal with two things at the same time. You have to deal with your grief emotion, mm -hmm. but you also have to deal with your current financial state because your current financial state is something that's going to keep going. Like yeah. it's not going to stop because you're grieving. Um, so I, I believe, and I tell people this, you know, when people say pray for those who are dealing with grief and pray for widows, when people pray and say, Lord, give them strength, mm -hmm. I believe that that strength comes even with handling this area of your life, mm -hmm. even with going through grief. So yeah. they don't stop. I think that's a good point. Everything keeps going. Life Everything, keeps going. Life keeps going. Everybody keeps going. Everything Everybody keeps, keeps going. going. You Everybody have to do keeps that. going. Yes. Um, so give us the first thing. If somebody is really maybe just lost their spouse and they're dealing with the initial shock of that, what, given the whole situation, <laughs> right, Everything. that's going on, what do they need to say to themselves? Okay, you know what? Here's the number one financial thing I need to do right now. I would say the first thing, if you, when you become, or if you become a widow or a widow, the first thing that I want you to do is to breathe. Mm -hmm. I know that's not necessarily a financial thing, but to breathe and don't panic. Mm -hmm. Breathe. Good. Don't panic and don't waste time because as I just said, your financial house is going to keep moving mm. forward. Your bills, your everyday expenses keep moving forward. Yeah. So breathe, don't panic, don't waste time. And I, I believe that a lot of widows, you know, and when we're in that situation, we're not necessarily mm -hmm. um, doing it intentionally of sticking our head in the sand because, you know, I was there. I just wanted to get in the bed and stay in the bed every day yes. like oh that's what I wanted to do I wanted to crawl oh, in the bed yes. <laughs> but like literally when I tell you that supernatural strength like when people you know say I'm praying for you that supernatural strength gives you the strength to get out of bed to move yeah. forward to try to just take care of the basic the basic financial things and I yeah. that's what you know I would say first thing is breathe yeah. don't panic don't don't panic don't panic and don't waste time in starting to bring things together as it relates to your financial house. That's good. Um, I often, I even think about this too. You lose a spouse, then the next thing you're supposed to expect to do is plan a big funeral. Oh my God. And you have to, and then in that, that, that train, the, the <laughs> funeral train moves forward, whether you want to move forward or not. And literally that's who I'm like, can I just have one day to there just was sit no in the bed days. and not have no, to do anything? There was anything. no time. No time. There was no time. No time. We, if I tell you how exhausted no we were no time. working on the funeral, there's no time. No Everything time. keeps moving. Um, mm -hmm. So I think you're starting with and that. Making, making the, and, and, making, and making decisions. And if your story is compounded by the fact that maybe your spouse, you know, left suddenly and there was no life insurance policy, so that train yeah. is not only moving and people yeah. are asking you to make decisions, but you're trying yeah. to figure out how am I going to fund this from a financial perspective and I don't know how much I have yeah. or how this is going to be to be funded. Wow. So after the initial shock, okay, let's just say they're like, okay, I've, I've calmed down. I'm going to put my trust in God. I'm going to breathe. What are the next things that they should think about? So I'm going to kind of give you 10 things that I believe that okay. you should do from a financial perspective okay. or information that you need to um, acquire when you become or if you've become a widow or a widower. Okay. So the first thing that I want you to do is maintain control or keep your cash tight. So keep your cash tight much. Um, you will need to support your lifestyle. So mm. people will come to you or you will start maybe even in dealing with your grief, you may start to spend a little bit more, but as you <laughs> As you are the retail therapy, right? And we say, you know what, Lord, real. I'm going through something. Like, tell the people, I'm going through something. I need to just go buy something. 
but keep your cash keep tight, tight until you get a good handle of on where you are financially okay when you say until you get a good handle on where you are financially is that meaning like tangibly practically does that mean I have a working budget so we're gonna get to okay we're steps. getting there we're getting okay so that's the first thing okay so keep it tight until okay. you know what's going basically, on basically don't be out don't impulsively try not to yes. get out here or like with, even with people people may come into your circle or come mm -hmm. on in to help because they think okay her husband passed away he probably had a policy or he had this or that okay. so they kind of are encouraging you to do this or that no you need to wrap your head around where you are financially keep, keep so it keep tight. it tight until you okay. know where you are okay. financially the next thing number two the next thing I want you to do is to get organized financially and take inventory of your financial house okay. where is the money where's the money yeah. figure out where's the money where is your spouse's money okay yeah. and one of the like I said I'm a financial educator and I have um, a company called Money Basics. So one of the tools that I put in my recent workbook mm -hmm. is a worksheet where it says, where am I financially? And I not only created it from my experience of being yeah. a widow yeah. saying, okay, we need to create a tool. The tool allows you to figure out where is the money. Okay. As you become a new widow or widower, you need to figure out where all the money is. Some people have several accounts, mm -hmm. whether it's investment accounts, um, bank accounts that maybe if you weren't the person mm -hmm, managing mm -hmm. the finances mm -hmm. you need to figure out where everything is mm -hmm. like in my case mm -hmm. because I managed the money mm -hmm. I knew where all where all the money I was see. and I even knew because my husband he was that kind of person that okay you take care of it this is what they gave me at work <laughs> you sign me up for yeah. you go into the account and pretend like you're me he would right. even like tell me just call the people and act like you're me I'm like they know I'm not Jeremiah they yeah. know I'm not a guy yeah like, no just yeah. say <laughs> yeah so because he had that personality um, I did know where everything was but it, I did still have to sit down mm -hmm. and write it all out and mm -hmm. figure out where everything was and who I needed to contact so I had to take inventory of my financial house to figure out where all of my resources were do you think that um because someone, uh, I had a couple of friends sit down and help me with this. I think that the initial anxiety, that's a good word. Mm. I had a lot of issues with anxiety around that. Mm -hmm. So having to schedule a meeting with them, even though it's hard, it was mm -hmm. hard because I wasn't used to inviting anyone else in on my financial conversation. So, um, but I think that having that meeting, if it was up to me to do it alone, I don't know. I don't know that I would have did it. So yeah. I mean, I think that's some of my advice. If you can do it on your own, if you if you if you feel as though you have the wherewithal to do it, do it. But mm -hmm. if you don't and you know I'm gonna procrastinate, I'm gonna avoid, then have someone else make an appointment or ask a friend or ask you know someone that's like a could be like a financial mentor to sit down with you and say. Can you basically sit here and hold my hand <laughs> while we look at this stuff and figure this out? And I know that made a big difference for me. And I will say, so that was one of my, I'll just bring it here now since yeah. we're, we're talking about this. Okay. So that was one of my other points. Get support okay. and help when and where you need it, whether okay. that is legal, financial, um, counseling, because like I said, you're managing grief yeah. and you're managing these finances. Yeah. Right now, um, it's tax season, so tax during tax time, talk to your tax preparer about your current um, your current state, like your current status has changed, mm -hmm. and there are tax implications, even to your tax um, to your 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 filing status changing because mm -hmm. now you are a widow, and there is a special category um, for for widows even on your taxes. So talk to your tax preparer. Mm -hmm. It's better to open up to people to ask for help when and where you need it. Um, there are people that are willing and ready to help you, but I will say to make sure that they are a trusted um, advisor for you. Okay. Make sure that they are a trusted advisor for you. Okay. So the next thing um, that I recommend that you do as you are walking through your grief journey, but also 
trying to pull your financial house mm -hmm. back into order is to understand what you own mm -hmm. and what you owe. So understand what you own and understand what you owe. Okay. So things that you own, like I just said before, bank accounts, um, investment accounts. Mm -hmm. If there was a life insurance policy, how much is that life insurance policy? Mm -hmm. um, retirement accounts. So if your spouse had an employer, if they had a retirement account, what's in that retirement account? Where are these resources? What are the steps that you need to take to actually bring those resources in-house um, under your control so that you know what you have to work with? Let me say this point for a lot of people. So if somebody's watching this and somehow you found this video and you are really fresh in this, um, mm -hmm. Maybe if you just lost someone, I've talked to widows, they just lost their spouse a few days before they yeah. talked to me. Um, one of the things that you want to know um, is that you need the death certificate. You're going to have an opportunity to order it. And a lot of people may request the death, death certificate. Um, student loans, if your husband, if there was a car or your wife, if they had a car or student loans or property or whatever in their name, you may need to have a copy of the official death death certificate. You do need a copy. Yeah, you need yes. several, get eight, at least so eight. So one of the resources, so like the funeral home that yeah. I work with, they eight order ten. and they say, well, how many do you want? That's I'm thinking, oh, one. Me. They were like, um, no, we're gonna no. order 10. I'm 10, like, I'm 8 like, to 10. So wherever you are, in your, you know, this is just if, if you're fresh, if you're fresh, 8 to 10 copies of the mm -hmm. official death certificate. And, and you may have to fax it to a lot of people. Like that's why you need 8 to 10 because sometimes you can just send a copy, but some of them want the official actual original copy. Yep. Um, official copy of the death certificate. Yep. Which leads me to what you owe. So um, there may be things that you owe separately together or they may have had in their own name so like for example the point one of the items that you brought up was student loans mm -hmm. so one of my husband's student loans were in his name yeah. because I all I had to do was let them know that he passed away and that debt was not my debt so yeah. there are some debts if they're solely in your spouse's name those debts will no longer be your debts credit card debts if your credit card so that's why this is a separate side note. That's why it's sometimes good to not combine your debts. You don't point. know what's going to happen. I'm not talking about real estate and property. Yeah. I'm talking about consumer, consumer, consumer debt. debt. So if there's a credit card in your spouse's name, you as the spouse are not responsible yeah. for that debt. So you just do, you do need to contact the credit card company and let them know. They will ask for a copy um, or an original copy of the, that death certificate, mm -hmm. but there are liabilities that now will come off of your monthly budget, but you have to get a handle on what you owe. One of the things that I do recommend to people is to get a copy of your credit report and also mm -hmm. maybe your spouse's credit report, because if you're not sure what he owed, because you like say you never mm -hmm. managed this, um, get a copy of it mm -hmm. and you, if you, if you if you know your spouse, you probably know all the answers. You can just go online and retrieve a copy yeah. of the credit report to see what's out there and see who you need to contact. But that's one of the best tools that you can use to, un to know what is owed um, in your financial house. Okay. Um, and like I said, determine there are some bills and liabilities that you're not required to pay because they were solely in your, your spouse's name. So know what you own and know what you owe. Yeah, that's good. Um, the next thing is, and you brought this up a little early, mm -hmm. but now we're getting to the trustee budget. So <laughs> understand your budget, where your budget is, know what your income is, and know what your expenses are. Yeah. So, and this is understanding, okay, what is the current state of my financial house? So for me, like I said, I did know what our budget was, but if you are new, um, a fresh widow um, or even a widow that this was this is totally new to you so you're really sitting down to say okay what what is my mortgage what is or my rent like what are my utility mm -hmm. bills what am I responsible mm -hmm. for sit down actually construct a budget and we've said this already if you need someone to help you because let's say you never budgeted before seek 
a trusted counsel, seek trusted counsel, whether it's a financial advisor, financial coach, to walk you through this process mm -hmm. of figuring out a budget. But you need to know what your income is from just yourself, mm -hmm. um, or also what for your spouse. So like, if you didn't know this, you can apply for government benefits. Um, and that's one thing that a lot of people forget when they are, because that's why I said, breathe, don't <laughs> panic, because yeah. there may be things that is, are available to you that you have no idea, but if you have a lot, and, and it's, it's natural, let me just say that, the feelings that you have are natural, mm -hmm. um, to be anxious, to have anxiety yeah. about what you're going to do, but breathe and don't panic. Apply for government, government benefits if you have, especially if you have children, those benefits are available to you. If you, even if you're just a spouse, your spouse probably paid into Social Security, and there are benefits that are available to you. So contact the Social Security office sooner than later. They're not the quickest office, so mm -hmm. I recommend that you yeah. contact them sooner than later. Even if you wait a little bit, you've been, you know, because the grief process is it can be strong. They will retroactive to the date that the, your, your spouse um, passed away for those benefits. So contact um, the Social Security Office for your government benefits. Um, as you are going through your budget, especially if this is new to you, go through your expenses with a fine tooth comb based on your new reality because your reality is changing as it relates to how much income is actually going to come into your household yep. and one of the things I didn't think about even when I was going through my budget is that some of my expenses like when I said if, if you don't owe it anymore those expenses are maybe going away mm -hmm. or those bills are going away mm -hmm. but some bills you know and I hate to say it like this because it may sound insensitive, but I'm speaking from a financial perspective and not yeah. Tamara, the, the widow. Yeah. Some, ex your bills do go down. So like my food budget went down, went down yeah. because my husband wasn't there anymore and I wasn't cooking as, as much or certain, you know, things that he liked. Like my husband was a Starbucks guy. Mm. Like he, every day, Starbucks, <laughs> like he had a Starbucks budget and that went away. Um, he took Uber more than me. Mm -hmm. So like mm -hmm. the money that we would put into an account for Uber, like now I yeah. use it for Uber kind of still, but like the balance, like actually it's mm -hmm. kind of a mini savings account because I don't use that money. Mm -hmm. So there are expenses that will adjust even like gas. If you were, you know, I mean, you, both of you guys were driving, but now you're not both driving. So your yeah, gas, um, your gas line now. Okay. So go through your budget with a fine tooth comb and determine what um, expenses are going to be lowered because your spouse is no longer here or what bills that you are no longer responsible for mm -hmm. because your spouse is no longer here. Um, then the last thing within the budget category is review your fixed expenses. Um, things like your your housing expense, whether you have a mortgage or rent, um, car expense, um, if you have a, a car loan, review your fixed expenses to determine if these things need to be adjusted. Um, I am going to make a point about this later, but just review these expenses to yeah. say, okay, depend upon what your situation is. Because some people I know, um, when you become a widow or widower, every situation is different yeah. every circumstance is different it's not a one size fits all um, solution so um, if your situation is drastically like some people like that was the only income so their housing situation may have to change because like this is it's, it's really really serious but um, go through those fixed expenses and determine what your next steps need to be yeah, that's really, um, I talked to a widow one time. She had to move out of her house, you know. Um, her husband was, I guess, a sole breadwinner. And I just, that's so much, you it's know, a I think, you know, it's that's a, a it's loss on top of loss. Yeah. Um, Which creates more emotions of grief. Yes, and so I would just say, like, if you are in that situation, um, definitely reach out for help. You know definitely reach out for help because that's the kind of thing you don't want to be in that alone and yeah. know that you're not alone you're, you're not, not the only person you're not that that has gone through it people have gone through it and somehow um, 
made created a new life that was still very good yeah. and very healthy yeah so know that that is possible as well yeah so then the next thing is talk to your creditors mm -hmm. sooner than later a lot of us, remember I said, we sometimes, not un intentionally, but stick our heads in the sand. We're like, we don't want to talk to them. <laughs> don't leave the envelope sitting and say, I'll just figure that out later. Okay. Talk to your creditors sooner than later. A lot of creditors have payment options, payment arrangements that are available. So when you call them, tell them what's going on. Discuss, say, you know, hey, I, you know, I lost my spouse either the, if mm -hmm. they were the sole mm -hmm. um, income into your home or now your income is significantly reduced, you don't know what programs or payment options are available to you because of your new status. So talk to them, let them know what's going on and let them know what you can afford to pay. But like I also said before, call the credit, creditors, all of them. Mm -hmm. um, you just never know, depending upon whether the bill, let's say you didn't know that the bill was solely in your spouse's name so now you're no longer responsible for that so you have to communicate so communication mm -hmm. with your creditors is key during this during this time during this time um, the next thing is identify your priorities within your budget and your new com new income reality so now you have a new income reality mm -hmm. so identify what your priorities are because everything you can't you can't do everything mm -hmm. so determine what your priorities are as it relates to okay we can still do this but now maybe we can't do this right now mm -hmm. and I tell people you know sometimes when we have to make adjustments we feel like oh my god I don't want to do that but sometimes things are just for a season it's okay. not I want people always to realize you know even when you do downsizing or cuts or things like that it's only for a season mm -hmm. it's only for a season I think when we change our perspective and our mindset on that mm -hmm. it's easier for us to step into that and, and to walk in it when we feel like it's only for a season but make determine what your priorities are especially if you're trying to balance and or rebalance um, yeah. your, your budget yeah um, that so what would be an example of the like my priorities have shifted you know what what would that look like okay I'll give you a, a practical okay. so let's say you're you're bound you're trying to balance this new budget mm -hmm. in this new reality mm -hmm. and it's not working so let's say your expenses are higher than what your income is okay. so you have to determine okay what's a priority for me is um, living where I live a priority is driving the car that I drive a priority or maybe it won't be it's not even that drastic maybe it's little things say okay um, before my goals were to aggressively pay off my debt so right now I can't do that um, but I can you know maybe pay a little bit less or let's say you had an aggressive savings goal so figure out what adjust and prioritize what your goals are now in your new mm -hmm. reality um, the other thing is with priorities okay right now a priority for me is not um, maybe going out as much mm -hmm. although I want you to have community I'm not saying not to have community but spending money mm -hmm. to engage in community may not be a priority for you right now based on your new income reality so look sit down and figure out okay what are my priorities what can I do mm -hmm. right now based on my current situation and remember I said this is only for a season mm -hmm. it's not That's forever good. it's not forever we're just grabbing a hold of what's going on right now yeah. and trying to figure out what the new plan is going forward that's a really good point I um I know some of you guys saw that um, I got a new car. I got a new mm -hmm. car um, in January, and that was because the car that I had was in my husband's name. He had a really high car note, and I really wasn't responsible for the car anyway. Mm -hmm. So my name was not on that loan. I paid that car loan, um, you know, even after he passed away. But when I sat down with other friends who looked at my budget, they they said. If you got rid of this, this would help you be able to free up some money in your budget. So um, a lot of the issue with me not getting rid of it was getting the confidence. <laughs> I mean, yeah. I think this is the underlying issues of losing a spouse. Getting the nerve, getting the guts, getting the confidence, 
even overcoming the emotion of the fact that I'm about to get rid of his car, you yeah, know? And that's, a, and that's a law. So, like, yeah. you, in, initially in that grief state, you want to hold on to every memory, Things everything that are connected yeah. to them because you're like, I can't. I can't give this up because you feel like you're giving up their memory. And it makes it real. It yeah. makes it, 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 even it seals makes it even the more deal. Weird. Yeah, like, oh, oh more real. this like, is really real. Yeah. yeah. He's not here. Oh, my God. I'm wow. Getting up I'm getting up his car. I'm getting, I'm getting rid of that car. So, but what ended up happening was I basically got a, I got a car in my name based on my own credit. Um, and the car note is cut more than half mm -hmm. so I mean it's a huge you know um, difference for me yeah. in terms of my budget so it was a good decision a I good felt decision. good about it and I felt proud of myself and I still had a lot I'm of people help of me thank you <laughs> I had a lot of you know friends and people mm -hmm. that are like my board of directors um, that you know I have in my life that help me make wise choices choices or you know even help me research the cars help me test drive the cars um, things that my husband would have done mm -hmm. but um, this was like a financial area that I took a huge step in and I was glad that I did yeah and so, so. like an example for me so like what priority so one for me um, when my husband passed building my emergency savings became mm. a top priority that's good for me because I'm like, okay, now I do not have that cushion, that second income. And even though I, I work for the government and it's a t pretty, pretty stable job, although, mm -hmm. you know, that government, that government shut, shut down, down. Okay. <laughs> but you know, we got our back pay. Right, right. You know, so for me, that was a top priority. Yeah. See how that circled back? Wow. Like this year we had a government shutdown that was the longest in history, but me building up my emergency savings, um, if that year after he passed that helped me to get through that's a great point the government shutdown so like so that's a prime example for me a top priority was making sure that my emergency savings was in full that was it was intact and I'm continuously working on that so would you say and I mean people um May question this is paying debt or emergency savings is emergency savings is priority over so debt, okay right? Okay. So the thing with emergencies, trying to figure out, okay, what do I do? Do yeah. I have an emergency savings yeah. or do I pay off debt? So evaluate what's best for you. But what I will say is that when you are free from debt, it becomes easier when things happen because you don't have to worry about that debt. Okay. I would, all, I would say have at least something in your emergency savings. Start with at least $1,000. Mm -hmm. In your making sure you have that mm -hmm. before you aggressively go after your debt okay. now if you know that you can't you're not gonna be even when you put put pen to paper and figure out what your debt repayment plan is gonna look like and how long it's gonna take you to do it if it's gonna take you more than two years to do it then you need to make sure you have your emergency savings built up because if something happens you are the sole provider now mm -hmm. in your in your household Okay. So that's what I would recommend okay. for that. Awesome. Um, the next thing is, and I've talked about getting support and help whenever you need it, but create a financial plan to move forward. And I know moving forward a lot of times is difficult to talk about, especially if your widow wounds are new and fresh, but you have to create a financial plan to move forward. Mm -hmm. I know for me, one of the biggest things was okay what is what are my financial goals now that Jeremiah mm -hmm. is not here like what does what are my what are my goals and aspirations because we had our own you know goals and aspirations together but what is that what am I dreaming about financially now That's that he's, he's not here That's a hard but I question. had to sit down and say okay what is my financial plan yeah. to move forward and That's that right. of course is real it it's includes really yes it, in, it includes of course the budget which we've talked about how to to create that in the new income reality but updating and people forget this updating like beneficiaries these things are they can be painful because I, I will say like for me it was like you said things that you have to do that seals it that this is real yeah updating your beneficiaries on your important financial um, accounts papers um, whether it's your your job contact information I had to update my emergency contact my emergency contact was no longer my husband that's a hard that still gets me when I go somewhere like who should we call in case of emergency that messes me up every time because it was like 
I already, I had a person. I had a person. <laughs> They're not here. So I had I, to go back to my mom. I'm like, I haven't, she said, hasn't been my emergency contact in 20, like 20 years. 20 years, yeah. And so, so, but update your beneficiaries because that's a huge thing that people forget about. So like your retirement accounts, any investment accounts, mm -hmm. um, bank accounts, savings accounts, making sure that your beneficiaries are updated. Mm -hmm. um, if you had, if you're a person that already had a will, you need to update that. If you had already power of attorney mm -hmm. documents, all these things need to be updated yeah. with your new information based on your new reality. So create a financial plan, okay. create financial goals based on your new reality to move forward in life. Um, the next thing is, and this kind of goes a little contrary, but it's, it's true if you don't have to do it, but take your time in making major financial decisions. That's At cool. least wait for like the first, the first year. And I, I will say, like, for me, I was able to thank thank God that I did not have to move out of my home yeah. based on, you know, where I was currently financially. But the only reason why I could determine that is I did those steps before. I looked at my income, looked at what was owed, did the work to say, okay, where am I um, financially? But if you can, don't make any major financial decisions um, at least for the first year and can, settle can into you, your new reality can you break down like what that means like sell your house so sell your house sell your you know move even if you're in a rental property and let's say the lease so like for me I was in a rental property and the lease was coming up due um, within like four or five months mm -hmm. I did not move I just resigned the lease I wanted like even for myself and my son mm -hmm. because we could for the environment to just stay exactly. the same because a lot of fluctuation and environment, that just triggers your emotions yeah. even more, even yeah. more. Um, car, like selling cars, like if you don't have to, just just stay put. Because you don't know what you really want to do. And in, in those moments, you really don't know what you want to do, um, where you want to go. So just, and you don't want to make us, you don't want to have regret in, in, in decisions, like, because you have a lot of emotions um, going on. Um, even another major financial decision could be like based on even your assets, um, whether you have investment accounts, like a retirement account, just roll it over, just <laughs> roll it over, okay? Take possession of it and roll it over. Don't yeah. let, allow people to help you make, you know, Drastic. major decisions like sell it and yeah. do this, invest in this, like yeah. invest in a business or just, just settle down, just settle down. I think this is a good point, okay? I I had heard it would be recommended a year or two, you know, mm -hmm. really, if you could hold off a year or two. Um, and when you're fresh, in those first, let's say, 8 to 12 weeks, you don't know what's going to happen. Yeah. So I, my husband passed away just 17 months ago. So many things have happened in 17 yeah. months. So many different things. I have changed in drastic ways yeah. in 17 months. And so I just want to say, like, don't. Like, don't freak out, you know, like whatever it is, just, just slow, you know, slow down. So many different things are going to evolve yeah. some different opportunities, different thoughts, different ideas. Mm -hmm. You're going to change. You're going to evolve. You may see things from a new perspective as you move on. Yeah. So just keep that in mind. And so I, I'm saying that from someone who I'm not weighed, you know, down a lot. How many years ago was it? So for me, had? it's been almost two and a half years. Stayed in my same house. Um, we have, have the same car. I didn't make any, you know, mm -hmm. I roll things. Like, and I talk about just, just rolling, over. a roll yeah. over the retirement account. And I will say this, like I'm saying, okay, it was Hammer, you, your husband had all this. No, he did not. <laughs> he had a very small insurance yeah. policy, which really basically covered the funeral. Mm -hmm. So that's why... Like some of, a lot of these things that I'm saying, keep calm, don't panic, figure out, you know, where your money is. I, I walk through these steps. Um, I walk through these steps and, and God, you know, really just, he, he blessed me. And you know, when he promised that he would be there, he yeah. would help you, he has done just that. Yeah. He has done, he has done just that. That's good. Um, but take your time in making major financial decisions. I'm um, at least one, to two years you know the pace at which your grief process is going mm -hmm. so as you're evolving with your grief process and working through it of course we know that there are ways um, to grieve 
Um, but as you're working through it, you'll know, you'll feel the perfect timing when to make these major financial decisions. That's good. You know, and then that's a great point. Um, that was how I felt about the car. You mm -hmm. know, when my, it was first suggested to me probably 12 weeks after my husband passed away. And I knew I can't do that right now. Mm -hmm. I, you know, I didn't disagree. I could see the numbers too, but I knew I, I just can't right. do all that at this point. But when it was time to do it, I just felt like, it you know fine. what, it's time to go. It's time to get this car. Yeah. yeah. So um, I agree with that. I think that's a good point. You, you, you may feel as though there are certain things that you can't really handle right now, but when it's time, you'll know, okay, it's time for me to make this move. Yeah. Yeah. And then the last thing is, and we've kind of said this, make financial decisions that are best for mm -hmm. you and your family. Mm. Personal finance is personal. It's not a one size fits all. You're gonna go through the process, like I said, of budgeting, figuring out what you own, what you owe. And like Lissandra just said, like somebody said, you, this is what you need to do. But you have to make the best financial decisions yeah. for you and your family. For me, I knew that it was not a good financial decision or move for me to move within that first five months. Because yeah. for it, for me emotionally, and then for my son, that would have been dramatic. Like, you, my dad is not here, and yeah. now I have to move out of the place where we may have felt comfort in the yep. space. That would have been too much. Um, so make the best financial decisions for you. Now, I know that maybe some of you, there's extreme um, circumstances that maybe you do have to move. Um, but like, get someone to walk through that yeah. process with you to help you process it because they're going to be a lot of emotions. So I would say during this season, um, as you're walking through this process, getting that support, getting that help, getting you know a trusted advisor, counseling, friends to speak mm -hmm. into your life to help you through that process is going to be the best thing because they, this is hard. Yeah. It's, it's hard. It is hard. It's a lot of work. Um, I want to say to that point... Um, my daughter, my youngest daughter, had asked us so often, could she be a part of gymnastics? Mm -hmm. And, you know, she, she was six at the time. And my husband had told me, one of the last things he told me, maybe a few weeks before he passed away, was um, don't, you know, let's not wait too late to put Hallie in gymnastics. Mm -hmm. So when she, when he passed away, I remember thinking in my heart, I don't know what that budget says, but she's going, going to go to gymnastics. gymnastics. Yes. And I know this may not seem like anything to anybody else, mm -hmm. <laughs> but this was in my heart. That was in his heart. She really wants to do that. And I felt that being a part of activities like that, yes. even the other children did other activities was good for their mental and emotional yes, health. Yes. And so I'm you know, we may not have splurged on a lot of things, but they did, did their activities. And that goes to back to my point of prioritize. What for you personally and Figure your family. out what your priorities yeah. priorities are in your new financial life. So you know during your grief process that is a priority. For me and it's so interesting that you say yeah. that for Ken and my son Basketball, and I think that God placed that. I don't know where He's taking him with that, mm -hmm. but I know for this season of him, you know, not having his dad here anymore, that has been the thing that I think has kept him yeah. going. And his, even for me, actually, because it was something that we now can do. Like we, like we go to basketball practice, we yeah. go to games, and so I do make room in my budget, in budget to make sure. so that he can do that activity because I know for a fact that that's a part of his journey. In, in dealing with the loss of, of his father. Yeah, so I think that that's, I, I just want to make that point because you may look at your family too, especially if you have young children and um, think, well, maybe this is not a priority. But if you feel in your heart that that is important, that an activity or a vacation, mm -hmm. some people took their kids out of town, you know, in the months after losing a spouse because they, they knew that we need this. Yeah. <laughs> My kids need an opportunity to go out of town because they're also dealing with a lot of stress. So, um, yeah, it may, it, it, it's really something to pray about and something yeah. to, I think, seek some wise counsel about, mm -hmm. but really follow your heart and the things that are important for you. And I'll say this, okay, because I do this. Because um, I don't believe in, like, going into debt trying to 
may suffer. But yeah. a lot of times people don't invite God into mm. their finances. Okay. And God knows exactly yeah. what we need um, to pro through our healing process during during grief. Yes. Speak that, name that, and say, God, you know, I really want to put my son, my daughter in this activity, or yeah. I really want to take a vacation. I'm telling you, I can, like, God is the only person I will bet 100% on. Yeah. You just never know how he'll provide that. But you have to name that and speak that and ask him, say, God, this is what I desire. I know what my finances look like. I don't desire to be, to go into debt for this, yeah. but this is what my desire is. And he, whether he shows you the strategy, how to, to do it, or yeah. you just never know what what'll what'll open up or what what blessing will come across your, your pathway for that to make that happen. Yeah. So That's I just good. want to say that. I received that from myself. Yes. Yes. Because <laughs> yes. I've seen that I, I mean I'm seeing yeah. that from a pers from personal yeah. experience. Um then the last thing, this is not a point, but I just want to say I know that this is um, a sensitive time, a sensitive season, mm -hmm. but I want to reiterate that seeking wise, reputable counsel um, for your personal financial situation is key. Having, um, like a said, like a board of directors, people that you trust yeah. that can speak into that are wise um, financial counsel during this season yeah. is 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 key. You know, um, even those around you that can speak, you know, continuously speak life into you, um, to and even into your grief process is key. But wise, reputable counsel, because there yeah. will be people that might come around that might not have that yeah. repu that that reputation of having your best interests at heart. So seek yeah. wise, reputable counsel. That's a great point. Or um, unfortunately, sometimes people, you know take advantage of mm -hmm. widows or widowers because they know you're in a vulnerable state. Yeah. Just, you know, taking your time to really think about that and mm -hmm. really um, go with someone that you can trust. Um, and I think that um, it helped me to talk to other widows yeah, or widowers who had just been through the same process. Like you talked about going to social security. Um, you know, people advise me about that. Okay, call and make your appointment. Don't just mm -hmm. show up. You know, this is how you gotta do this. You know, just And it's gonna like take that. a time to get the yeah, appointment. Yeah, it's gonna take a long time. <laughs> you're thinking, oh, okay. And they say, it's over the phone. Okay, I'm thinking, okay, then call you tomorrow. Oh no, your appointment's no. like a month away. I'm like, Or it really? could be like three months away. Right. You know, you don't know, so. But that, like I said, God provides. So yeah. like mine was a month. But even with, and the guy gave me the right um, agent person to talk to because yeah. she's like just bring the forms down and be just what can you walk them over to me and I'll get this mm. process right away so whatever you need you really have to trust that God okay you knew yeah. that I was gonna be in this situation before I got into the situation okay so that's a good point <laughs> you knew that I was gonna be in this situation yes. so I'm gonna trust that you have the plan and that you're gonna that you're gonna take care that, that you're gonna take care of me throughout this the, this process I feel like we can wrap up. We can okay, start wrapping yeah. up right on that because I, I and I and I had to tell myself this. I tell other widows this. You may be caught off guard that this is a part of your story, but God's not caught off guard. God mm -hmm. knew that this was going to happen, and there is already provision made. Yes, He was working on this years and years ago. <laughs> putting people in place so that when you got yeah. here and in your life so that when you got here you would have the support you need or that you would have whatever you needed and um i just want to say i'm a living witness that that's Me true too. tam says the same thing i've heard countless other people and other widows and widowers say the same thing so um keep trusting god keep yes. keep trusting keep praying keep your hope keep your faith tell them where they can find you where so can you they find can you online you can find me on social media at money is basic at money is basic on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. And my website is moneybasicsonline.com. I do do financial coaching. So um, if you are a widow or widower that you are seeking, you know, someone to actually sit down with you and go through a budget, I do have that experience to do that. And I also have the personal experience of knowing and understanding where you are right now. Awesome. Um, and if you have got, if you guys have not subscribed yet to my channel, subscribe, please like, subscribe, <laughs> like, share, and subscribe the video. Um, you can share this with someone else who you think can benefit from the information. And you can find me on Instagram at Grace and Grief. See you next time.